Hello and welcome to Midlife Meltdown. Today I thought I'd try something a little bit different. So one of the challenges I've got in 2020 is time management. So as I've said in previous videos, being on my own, two dogs, a career and a house to maintain and a bunch of other stuff to do, makes it a little bit difficult to squeeze in making videos. So I thought I'll try this morning. This is the 5th of January on a Sunday. I thought I would try making some videos out and about and I was a little bit reluctant to do it because I thought one of the things I, I didn't want to do is I'm conscious that the stuff that we talk about on this video or in these videos is a you know, slightly sensitive subject and I didn't want to cheapen the videos by making kind of vlog style videos but at the same time a lot, I'm getting a lot of questions you know asking me to respond to certain things so I thought making videos while doing things like being out and about with my dogs which is a, an activity that actually really helps me recover and go through what I'd call stage four. Might be a good use of time. So let me know if you think this is a, you know, something you want to see. If you prefer just the, the sort of in the house videos, I'm happy to kind of carry on with those. They are just a little bit time consuming to make. It takes a little bit of time to set up. So doing things like this just allows me to use a bit more of the time um, as well as maybe being a bit therapeutic. So walking my dogs is an extremely therapeutic activity for me and something I really really like doing and, and really helps take my mind off of any negative thoughts that I have um, so I've got two dogs which you can probably see if I pan around here I've got my two two-year-old lurcher Ash who's the older half-brother and the younger four-month-old who's his half-brother from the same mother Radley so uh, these two uh, keep me fairly busy and, and have, have made making these videos quite a challenge over the last two months with having a new puppy in the house. But he's got to an age now where he's a little less puppy-like, still chewing a few things, but acting a bit more like a dog. So it's kind of good to get him out and he can learn to hunt and chase things from his older brother. So if, I, if the editing of this video is a little bit, a little bit over the place, it's probably because they've seen something that they want to chase. Uh, so if they see any rabbits, hares or deer, particularly hares, which is what they're bred for, they will dart off and I'll probably have to stand here and whistle and call for them for about 10 minutes until they decide they want to come back. If you had any kind of sight hound dog, they, you know they have zero recall with their prey drive once they've seen an animal and they're extremely fast. But hey ho. So today's video I wanted to, to talk a little bit about what I use to cope with with the sort of stage four, like what I call the quarantine stage. So once you're out of the narcissistic relationship, and, and that's where I am at the moment, I've been so for about the last sort of half a year, the last six months, how, how, I, and how I cope with sort of the negative feelings and, and the, the emotions that may come up. And there's a few, a few simple tricks that, that I use um, that may be helpful, maybe not, but I thought I'd go through them. And it's, and it's a difficult thing. I, you know, I've had a lot of comments and, and actually had a telephone conversation with uh, with one of the viewers uh, yesterday, which was which was really good, good for good for me, hopefully good for for him or you if you're watching as well. Um, and and it was really he's in the same stage about you know how to how to stop thinking about your ex and and how to get over the the sort of the the hoovering that goes through and any, any negative thoughts that you have. And and I think the perception that that I give on the videos, which is kind of true, but but I always like to be honest. I think the perception I give is that I'm completely past it, I'm very in control and, and you know, I, I don't have any issues with it anymore. And that, that's, not, that's not the reality. Uh, the reality is I'm, I would say I'm 90% okay past it, over it, but I still have, I still have negative thoughts. There's still, there's still a lot of anger that, that I could choose to indulge in if I, if I wanted to. You know, there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of trauma that's, that I've been through, and I, and I would, I think I've just said in the video I recorded, I, I would definitely say that in the in the later stages of like extracting myself from my relationship, I, I definitely suffered from some kind of PTSD-like symptoms. You know, there were some some deeply traumatic acts that happened during that time, and it's um. So I, I still, I still have negative thoughts. I still have feelings of guilt. I still, to an extent, miss my ex, you know, or at least I miss who I thought she was. And that's, I think that's a kind of key 
a key thing to understand is like you're, you, if, if you're feeling like you're missing your ex-narcissist and it's a, it's a hard one to really grasp but in reality you're, you're, you're missing an idea you're not missing the real person because you didn't really know the real person you know you knew elements of them but in reality they weren't who you, you loved the full self you didn't love the real narcissist the real person and it's um, the latching onto the thinking latching onto the the thoughts of your ex is really latching onto an idea not not to a real person and, and I, I really clearly saw during the divorce I really clearly saw the real person and and what I was to that person that that's kind of helped me get over it a lot but um the the key thing I wanted to discuss today is is really just some of the the, the, the kind of tools that I, as I said before I'm, I'm a huge fan of visualization so so some of the things some of the methods that I've used not taught just things that have kind of come, come to me over time um, and references that I've used that really helped me kind of deal with it and the, the, the best piece of advice I would give is once you're going through anything from stage two to stage four so anything from from like kind of the, the, the you know the education of knowing what what NPD is all the way through definitely through the divorce through the extraction phase and also through the quarantine stage the biggest the biggest challenge and the biggest enemy you'll have are emotions now it's a really difficult thing because it's a very emotional thing to go through but emotions are the absolute enemy of making rational decisions and that's a key thing that the narcissist will play on is is to, to latch onto those emotions to latch onto those you know those feelings and, and play with your emotions and, and by nature if we're codependent you know we're, we're likely to have strong emotional feelings we're likely to be quite lonely people fairly empathic you know we're, we're able to feel other people's emotions very well and that's that's a that's a great thing to be it makes you a very compassionate person but it's also a bit of a trap and one thing i did when going through particularly through the divorce phase was consciously focus on on trying to eliminate feeling certain emotions and and why that might sound a bit psychotic what what i really mean by that is 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 being very conscious of them and actually avoiding things that made me feel emotional so there are two things you know specifically there one is is music it's extremely tempting to to listen to emotional music and there are there are certain things that i just won't listen to and can't listen to um so certain songs um, just music in general I tended to cut off or at least listen to only specific things um, the other thing is, is, is movies is there are certain movies that again will resonate with the situation you're going through there are certain movies even today that, that I think I, I would struggle to watch and I'll go through some of those in a minute but avoiding those two things and trying to keep you know I'd almost if you're a fan of Star Trek or you've watched Star Trek I'd, I'd almost try and visualize yourself as a Vulcan you know if you if you can if you can be Vulcan in your approach to to exiting a relationship you'll you'll fare much better and you'll be a lot less vulnerable to to the narcissist tricks to try and keep you there um, the, the other thing to especially in the quarantine stage so, so what I'm going through now the other thing that really helped me um, and this is actually a movie reference that that may help um, the other thing to realize is that when emotions do come up is that the damage that we've done the emotions that you feel you need to try and visualize them like physical pain so if you imagine that you have a physical injury someone someone has attacked you physically they've they've beaten you up they've broken bones whatever it is you're you're going to be left with a recovery that may take a year two years and throughout that recovery you're likely to to suffer pain and recurring pain and in fact you might even incur pain for the rest of your life but the thing is when it's a physical injury it's very easy it's very tangible it's very it's very kind of easy to be conscious of it and, and almost predict it so you know if you, if you have something like arthritis you're aware that on a damp day like it is today it's pretty gray and damp you know if you're suffering from arthritis you you're likely to have you know arthritic pain on a day like today you know when it's going to come you know what it is when you feel it and and effectively you can manage that pain and and are aware of it when it comes to emotional and psychological pain you know it's a lot harder to it's a lot harder to treat it in a rational way because by their very nature that emotional that that kind of uh, the emotional pain effectively makes us want to act in a certain way to to stop it 
And the biggest piece of advice I could, I could give really is, is that it's to understand and believe that just because you're feeling emotional pain, it doesn't mean you need to react to it. And actually the more you, the more you can ride through that emotional pain and, and predict that emotional pain, the easier it becomes. So I, this is something that happened to me very clearly through, through the sort of the discard phase as it were. So going through, you know, my, my ex having her affair and just leaving me at home while she was going off and doing whatever she was doing. You know, I, I went through suicidal thoughts, you know, to the point where I was ready to kill myself. I had, I had nights of sleepless nights where I knew that she was out, you know, having sex with other people and I was at home, you know, absolutely tearing myself to pieces. And, and there would be aftershocks to that as well. The next day, you know, while she was away, I would, I would feel certain pains. But the, the strange thing is it happened so many times that it, it became almost predictable. And, and those feelings, if you can sort of visualize them almost as physical pain, become a lot easier to deal with. So, so when I have like a tight chest, when I, when I feel anxiety, which is less often now, but at the time was, was very, very common, you know, that, that feeling of a tight chest, if you can just say to yourself, oh, this is anxiety, this is what anxiety feels like. I know that for the next six hours, you know, or at certain times of the day. So for me, for example, you know, it's very common at certain times, particularly in winter in the UK when it gets dark, that onset of darkness because of things that I associate with, that onset of, of sort of early darkness in the winter months starts to trigger anxiety because I, I associate with certain events. But, but because I know that, I'm able to, to say, oh, you know, I'm going to feel anxious for the next six hours and I'm not going to act on it. I'm not going to do anything silly. I'm not going to, you know, try and compensate for it. I'm just going to accept and feel it. That's just anxiety. It's not going to kill me. It's just going to, it's going to feel pretty crappy for the next six hours, um, you know, and, and just try and try and see it almost as like, yeah, like I'm, you know, for the next six hours, my, my arthritic knee is going to feel painful, you know, and, and, and I know how to deal with that. I have coping mechanisms to deal with it that are, that are healthy and safe, and I'm, I'm just going to go through them. I don't actually have an arthritic knee. It's just an example that I was trying to think of. Um, so, so it's just kind of allowing yourself to, to predict and feel those feelings, but realize that emotional feelings won't kill you. They won't do you any damage. They're just feelings. And that sounds so simple, but it's a very difficult thing to do because the, the pain is real. The, the, the feelings are real and they're extremely difficult to deal with. But just try and visualize them as physical pain. Try to predict them. Try to spot the patterns and just allow yourself to go through them. And, and actually you become a lot better at dealing with them. And strangely enough, I think you become a stronger person. So I think one of the key, the key elements to recovering from being a codependent, from being heavily empathic, is actually to learn how to manage those emotions. I think that's one of the things we struggle with is learning how to control, learning how to almost kill those emotions at will. And that's something I've got a lot stronger at is when I, when I feel, and I still do feel, emotions towards my ex and you know whether that's anger whether that's guilt whether it's you know feelings of yeah of of missing them i'm i'm very able to kind of kill those through sort of just visualization and just just trying to switch my brain into something else so, you know even if it's even if it's visualizing kind of like killing that emotion you know like physically it it really helps and it's um i say i think it's something that's essential for us to do and, and something that, you know, I think if, you, if you're if you unable to do that, it's going to be a real struggle to get through and fully recover. But the on the on the music and movie front, I say it's very tempting when going through this to to indulge in in things that make you feel a certain way or things that validate the way you're feeling. And, and for me, that was that was heavily music based. You know, I'm. I'm an amateur mu musician myself, I like to play music a lot, and it, and it was very difficult to actually have to cut that that off out of my life and just say, you know what, I'm not going to listen to any real emotional songs, you know, for for a, for a while. The same thing with movies, you know, any any movies. I mean, I, I tend to avoid them anyway. But any movies involving animal death or anything like that, or any sort of romantic movies, I just tend not to watch. Um, but there are, on that note, there are a couple of there are a couple of movies that have actually really helped me through and. One of them, I'm going to forget the title of it now. The, the main one that I would say that helps me with this, this analogy of the visualization, but it's actually a very difficult movie to watch for me because it's, it very much parallels 
and, and helps me sympathise with my ex, which is a bad thing, was is a, the Russell Crowe movie, A Beautiful Mind, you know, the Oscar winning movie by Ron Howard, um, where, where Russell Crowe is playing the mathematician, you know, who's, who's suffering from schizophrenia and, and going through a, a psychosis there. And, and that's towards the end of that movie as he starts to manage his schizophrenia and, and kind of get hold of, of his condition. You know, as, as an older man, there's a, he explains his, his ability to manage it as a, like being a diet of the mind, you know, that he still, he still sees his visions, he still sees, you know, and experiences his, his psychosis, but he chooses not to indulge in it. And it's a, it's a really, really useful analogy for me because that, that is exactly what this is like. And when I talk about killing those emotions or not responding to them, I feel like it is very much like a physical, you know, food diet in that there, those feelings are going to be there. So like I said, I still have fairly intense anger moments if I, if I choose to think about, if I choose to indulge in some of the things that have been done to me and some of the injustice of it all, you know, it's, it allows me to become very angry and that I have to look at it and think, well, that's just, you know, detrimental to my life. Those feelings are not good for me. And ultimately it's me that suffers and you know there's a, there's a good saying there around kind of jealousy or envy is like drinking poison and hoping that someone else gets sick and it's it's extremely true you know those feelings are only detrimental to yourself so so the whole point of the whole or the whole thought of indulging or choosing not to indulge in those things really resonate with me because it is a choice you know when you when you feel that intense anger and it's it gets easier over time when you feel that intense anger or that injustice you're you're choosing to indulge in that thought and by choosing not to indulge in that thought in the same way that if you have food that you know is an absolute you know attraction for you if there's a cake this chocolate that you just can't resist and i know that feeling going through christmas at the moment then then you have the choice to indulge in it or not and, and you know ultimately that too much indulgence in in food is is going to be bad for you you know you will suffer physically from it in the same way that too much indulgence in, in emotional or, or psychological pain and thoughts will, will be negative for you. So that, that was really helpful. The rest of the movie, extremely difficult for me to watch. It was a, it was a movie that I loved and, and actually one of mine and my ex's favorite movies, which is quite ironic, but the, the very nature of the movie and, and you know, the, the sympathy towards someone going through a, a psychosis, someone going through a, a severe mental illness probably steers me much more towards being sympathetic towards my ex, which is not good for me. So I tend to avoid that movie a lot at the moment. I, I'll, I'll be able to watch it in a year or two, but going through the depths of this, it's, it, it, it tends to push my, you know, empathy much more towards, you know, that they're a victim and they're suffering through this. And if I can just help them pretty much as, you know, John Nash's wife helped, you know, John Nash get through it, then then it'll all work out, and that's not the reality, and that's something I need to avoid. And on, on the music front, it's fairly similar. You know, there's, there are songs that sort of trigger my emotions, particularly at the moment. Uh, you know, the Elton John song "Rocket Man." There's a line at the beginning of that around kind of missing the earth and, and missing my my wife, or it might be life. I need to check that because that might make that song a little bit more palatable. But um, you know, things like the stupid stupid things like there's a meatloaf song. You know, for crying out loud, you know, where he's kind of screaming at someone to let them know that he loves them. And going through this, it, it really played on my, my emotions a lot because that felt very much like, a, you know, what I was trying to do and, and not getting through. But, um, you know, in, in, in reality, most of those things over the next six months, I think I'll be able to get back to. My, my life feels very much different and my environment feels very different and my emotions feel very different to what they did, you know, a good, a good few months ago. And that's really it in summary. I mean, I think, I think the point of this is, the point of the video is just to really, to highlight that, you know, emotional discipline is something you can develop and something I think as, as empathic people, as codependent people, we need to develop. And that will, that will benefit you in, in, in the wider, wider sort of aspects of life as well. I and mean, it helps me in my career as well. As I've done some damage to my career, that's something I need to repair. And being emotional about that is, is not a good thing. And, you know, my theory is I think, you know, you're always about three, three poor decisions in life away from your life spiraling out of control. And, you know, the first one of those, which I've experienced already, is choosing a bad partner. You know, I think, I think making poor financial decisions is, is something that can really destroy your life. 
you know and uh, and and to to be frankly honest on the on the the aspect of poor partner decisions you know something that, that people don't talk about a lot really that that probably needs to be talked about particularly as a as a man is is being on your own and choosing to be single you know you're you're at the mercy sometimes of of sexual urges that can lead you to make very poor decisions with with partners and again that's something that can spiral your life out of control and you know lucky enough I'm a I'm an older man that doesn't seem to to be that much of a challenge in my life anymore compared to like my 20s but but it's it's a real thing and uh you know these are all things that we need to be disciplined in in order to lead a good life and and actually where I find myself at the moment is just trying to trying to make good decisions my next challenge is really going to be around making good financial decisions around whether I try to keep the the family home that that I help build and you know it's I'm, I'm left with a a mortgage that's probably too big for me to really sustain long term or, or too big you know for me to sensibly sustain and, and there are probably better things I should do with the money but you know I, I need to make sure I'm, I'm approaching that decision in the next few months very rationally and very unemotionally because I am very emotionally tied to that house I've lost lost animals there I've, I've got new animals there I, I have animals that I always thought I'd, I'd like to see their lives out in that house but you know at the same time their their lives are going to be you know benefit much more from from making sensible decisions rather than emotional ones as will mine but you know that's the that's the challenge that comes up so that's really it you know i just wanted to to make a quick video on on you know the 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 discipline of managing emotions and things that have helped me and if you do find the video useful then uh, then please leave a comment share the video hit the like button and if you like the channel and you want to see more videos please subscribe and hit the notification bell you know, if, if you like this style of video, let me know. Um, I say it would, it would help me. I, I'd love to make more videos to help people, but I'm, I'm struggling for time a little bit at the moment. So this helps me make use of my other time. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I don't want to cheapen the subject. So if this video works for you or doesn't work, you know, let me know. So um, in the future, I may, I may try and make some basic videos, even though it's just responding to specific questions on the way to work, that kind of thing. Um, if, you, if you do or don't want to see that, let me know. And uh, other than that, I'll see you at the next video.